Hello my soccer universe, the Nations League is back with quite some interesting results. I just want to highlight three of them, the biggest one and the best of them. San Marino got a win. Fortunately I don't have a San Marino jersey otherwise I would be wearing one. However I'm wearing this Italy jersey because Italy got a massive 3-1 win at France. Fully deserved with a wonder goal in there, the equalizer by Di Marco with the Tonali season. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely loved it. Italy look a whole lot better than they looked at the Euros. And I think the third most remarkable result is definitely Georgia beating the Czech Republic 4-1 at home. Yes, it's a home win. But nonetheless, this is Georgia against the Czech Republic, a team that actually dominated them at the Euros. In this video, I'm gonna run through longer edits of the short videos that I've made, reviewing some key matches. Then I give you also my thoughts on where we currently are in each group. And then we look at the upcoming games. So I would say let's get started. The Nations League is back and the big story out of League A is of course Cristiano Ronaldo scoring his 900th goal in a 2-1 win over Croatia and his goal is also the winning goal. Portugal took a 1-0 lead already in the 7th minute through a brilliant attacking move through both Bruno Fernandes who finds Santiago Dallo 7th minute it's 1-0 Portugal and then Nuno Mensch assists Cristiano Ronaldo in the 34th minute and the emotions came through for big Cristiano. However Diego Dallo then also with an own goal gets Croatia back into the game. Croatia cannot find equalizes so Portugal hang on for that win. In the same group Poland start with a rather dramatic 3-2 away win at Scotland where Szymanski gave Poland an early lead then McTominay seemingly had equalized however there was a handball then a penalty given away Lewandowski converts to make it 2-0. However Scotland came back 46 minutes. Bobby Gilmore already makes it 1-2 and then McTominay gets his equalizer in 76 minutes. However another penalty and it is uh, Zalewski who then deep in stoppage time converts for the winner and so Poland are ahead of Portugal now in their Nations League group. European champions Spain had of course their first competitive fixture post winning in Berlin in Serbia and it was a nil nil draw where of course Spain had more of the game and Lamin Yamal had a few chances however the biggest one fell to Jovic in the first half where he could choose the corner where to go and he puts it over the bar nil nil and in the same group Denmark get a 2-0 win over Switzerland a win that was sealed very very late on and was also greatly helped by two red cards for Switzerland first Elvedi is sent off then in the 82nd minute Dorgu who just had came on for the first time for Denmark scores with his first action in the 82nd minute then Schalke is sent off with a second yellow card and very late on then Hoiberg the new Danish captain makes it 2-0, so Denmark are also off to a good start in the Nations League group. Italy may have played in their ugly away jersey, however there was almost nothing ugly about Italy's performance. Maybe the mistake by Di Lorenzo in the opening seconds of the game that allowed Brady Bacola to open the scoring already after 13 seconds for France. But then it was really Italy that took over the game, that actually had a plan. I don't know where the start plan for France was. France look absolutely lost. Yes, there was a good chance by Mbappé, but before that, already Fratesi had hit the cross by the Retegi, missed on the rebound, and then a brilliant equalizer where Tonali and Di Marco combine in an absolute gorgeous fashion. The way Tonali back heels it out of the air and then Di Marco volleys it in, stuff of legends. In the second half, Retegi and Fratesi combine very early on to make it 2-1, and then Raspadori, after a nice Udoji assist, makes it 3-1. Emphatic win. Italy look like they're back. Or is it more that France are bad? At the same time, Belgium beat Israel 3-1 to the Bruyne goals. The first one assists by Doku, second one penalty. Openda also misses a penalty. At the conclusion of Nations League match day one in League A, we saw the two favorites in League A3 getting two very lopsided wins. The Dutch beat Bosnia and Herzegovina 5-2. How they should have been way more and that Bosnia scored two goals out of nothing was really not characteristic for a game. Tells you what a weird team this is. Xerxes gave the Dutch already an early lead in the 13th minute and then they pressed for more but got caught out on the counter where Demirovic makes it 1-1. Tijani Reinas hits the crossbar but just before the half he actually makes it 2-1. Gakpo after Reinas assist 3-1 and then 
again, Jacko out of almost nowhere makes it 3-2 and you're thinking this is really not representing the game well. However, two late goals through Weghorst and Xavi Simons make it a proper scoreline for the Dutch. And in Düsseldorf, Germany started the post Manuel Neuer, post Thomas Müller era, very emphatic with a 5-0 win over Hungary. That was never in the cards for me. Germany played like they had a lot of fun, especially the first goal. You thought already there were too many passes, but then it all worked out and the way Musiala sees Phil Kruk, who can tap it in from a short distance was really nice. Musiala himself is sent by Wirtz, running alone on goal, is caught, still can compose himself, makes it 2-0. I have to say Gulashi did not look good. And then Wirtz in the 66th adds a third one. Gulashi also didn't look good on Pavlovich's goal to make it 4 and then Havertz converts a penalty. Really emphatic stuff by Germany. Looking at the standings in League A, we see now that Portugal are just behind Poland in the first group. However, Portugal are more or less in control with that big win. It is early on. I will still favor Croatia over Poland. However, we gotta see. In A2, Italy, massive win. They are now odds on to finish in the quarterfinal. In A3 is Germany and the Netherlands. They will be meeting soon. Very interesting one. I think those two will be the class of this group. And then Denmark got the big win. Spain only a point, but you know, Spain still massive favorites. But winning against Switzerland was huge for Denmark because that puts them now in a slightly better position moving into the quarterfinal. Coming up in League A, the big match, of course, has to be the last one. Netherlands against Germany. What a classic. That will be a really interesting one. We also have a neighboring duel between France and Belgium. I think there should be also some eyes on that. I think it's already an important game for Croatia as well. They probably should need to beat Poland to stay in contention there. Austria start their Nations League campaign with a one vault draw in Ljubljana against Slovenia. Honestly, this was kind of a mixed bag because although you tried to score early on again for the first 20-25 minutes, Slovenia were definitely the better team and gave the Austrian defense quite some things to think about. And Slovenia actually had early chances, then they get a penalty because Vienna stretches out a hand and the ball hits right here. Seško converts it very emphatically. However, then the game kind of turned in Austria's favor, especially after the equalizer came through Konrad Leimer. Brilliant move from Saibor to Mvene in to Lima, who then with a very nice shot makes it 1-1 and then Austria were on top and had a few chances but never could quite get the shot off. Second half slowly fizzled out. It also has to say I think both teams were then kind of okay with the draw although I had the feeling that Austria a little bit more pushing but if you open yourself up too much you might end up conceding and risk a loss that you really do not want to have. The draw also suits with the rest of the group as Norway went to Kazakhstan, only managed a nil-nil draw there. Yes, they had more chances and especially Erling Haaland hits once the post from a very short distance. In the end, it's a, another disappointing result for the Norwegian national team. I think this group is wide open. In other League B action, we saw Iceland beat Montenegro 2-0 by two headed goals, typically Iceland, but also Wales and Turkey play out a nil-nil draw. That was all Wales. They had so many chances, they couldn't convert them, even when Turkey was down to 10 men. On Lee Carsley's debut as an England interim manager, England go to Ireland, beat them 2-0, and of course it is the two Irish men in the England squad, Declan Rice and Jack Grealish, who scored the two goals. I have to say the build-up play to the second goal by Grealish was really, really nice, and again it's assisted by Declan Rice. Yeah, both of them did not celebrate too much, but it must really hurt if you're an Ireland fan. In the same group, Greece get a big 3-0 win over Finland, also helped by a Radetzky error when he cannot handle a back pass and Ioannidis taps it in from a short range. And 23rd minute and a brilliant play that results in an own goal by Kalman of Finland. And again, Ioannidis laid on, make it a 3-0 score and Greece are the first leaders in Nations League Group B. Too. There obviously is no ending to the Georgia fairy tale. They completely took apart the Czech Republic, a team that they almost lost to at the Euros and got a draw out of it. This time around, it was an emphatic 4 1 win. Kvartskhelia with a penalty gets Georgia onto the winning road. However, it is after having Chuck Vitatsi, Mikotatsi, and Kokorashvili make it 4 0 by the 66 minute. Very late on, Kalvach with a beautiful volley pulls one back for the Czechs, but it's a little too little too late. And in Prague, Ukraine took on Albania. Albania had morphed the game in the first half, however, against the run fake, Konoplia gave Ukraine a lead, however, very quickly Ismaili and Azani then turned it around to make it a 2-1 win for Albania to start their Nations League campaign. 
arguably the two outsiders are now in the leading group b1 georgia and albania this group is very very even but you know with having three points in the bag of course there's slight favorites there group b2 england of course it should be england but greece look like the second strongest team they beat finland very convincingly austria slovenia norway has a wide open group austria still the favorite slovenia slightly over norway at the moment but i would still think that norway should be better than slovenia but never discount the slovenians and in group b4 yes iceland enjoy the early lead however it is turkey that should be considered the favorites especially after they grab that point in cardiff there are a couple of interesting games in League B. We have on Monday Norway against Austria. That's probably the game that I will be watching and focusing on. Massive game for Austria. You needed to get at least a point out of Norway, I would say. Albania against Georgia. The two big winners from the first match. They also meet each other. And the other game is already the last chess game between the Czech Republic and Ukraine. England, of course, play at home against Finland. Should be an easy win. Other than that, we had a lot of League C action. We had Sweden going to Azerbaijan, winning 3-1. Although this is a much closer game, Azerbaijan could have taken the lead through a penalty that was saved. Then Isak and Gjökeres take apart the Azeri defense. They pull one back and then even hit the post later on. So it could have been a 3-3. In the same group, Slovakia get a 1-0 away win at Estonia. Bulgaria only managed a 0-0 in Hungary against Belarus in a game where they had a little bit more of the game to be honest and then also Northern Ireland get a relatively easy 2-0 win over Luxembourg. In League C Romania played brilliantly at Kosovo. The footwork on Mann's opening goal is just something to behold. He also later hit the post in the second half. Lusk's very own Valon Berisha gives away a penalty that Marin converts and then Romania gets a third one through Dragos after a nice Mihaila assist absolutely brilliant stuff that the Romanians were showing in the same group Cyprus beat Lithuania away from home also 1-0 slight upset I would say. In group C4 North Macedonia get a 1-1 draw at the Faroe Islands and Armenia with an emphatic 4-1 win over Latvia brilliant own goal by Latvia to make it 2-1 for Armenia in there. In Group C1, Sweden and Slovakia are in full control. One of those will get promoted. I think it will be Sweden. And then it will be between Estonia and Azerbaijan to see who will go into the playoff into League D. I'll be curious to see if Estonia can pip Azerbaijan. I would favor Azerbaijan there. Romania, the class of their group, is very, very level for the other two spots. Lithuania having now the short stick, if you would like. Group C3, Northern Ireland with the win. Probably a slight advantage. Bulgaria, Belarus, Luxembourg relatively easy. Even. And then Armenia probably might come out of this group. Never discount North Macedonia though. They got the away draw. Latvia seems to be set on going down. Here are the upcoming matches in League C. I'm having an eye on Bulgaria against Northern Ireland. I really want Bulgaria to win. There are seven games unbeaten. But there are six draws in there as well. Slovakia against Azerbaijan, Sweden against Estonia. Those should be relatively easy wins. I think it will come down to the head-to-head -head between those two. And since Romania played so well, also watch their match against Lithuania. There could be goals in there for sure. And then North Macedonia against Armenia. The two favorites in their group are also matching up. Without doubt, the best story coming out of the Nations League on the first day came in League D with San Marino beating Liechtenstein 1-0. It's their first win in 20 years when they also beat Liechtenstein 1-0 at home and their first ever competitive win. Let that sink in. The players were celebrating after the game like they had won the World Cup and the same reaction came from the Liechtenstein players. Nicola Sensoli is the hero of that game and I'm so happy to see San Marino finally getting a win and get that monkey off their backs. And in the other League D game, Moldova beat Malta 2-0 with a beautiful free kick and a penalty all in the first half. Everyone in San Marino should frame this league table. They are leading the group. Yes, it's only one game, but they're leading the group. They even have the second best chance of advancing right now. They might get into a playoff. Unbelievable stuff, but you know, still a few more games to be played. And Moldova, I expect to come out of their group as the top seed. And then it will be between Andorra and Malta. I yeah, would actually slightly favor Andorra. And in League D, Gibraltar could actually get also off to a good start over with a win over Liechtenstein and Andorra probably could challenge Moldova if they also get a win over Malta.
So these were my few thoughts on the first matches in the Nations League. Looking forward to match day two, as I already said in my video, looking at the new format. I really like the Nations League in general because it gives us very interesting competition and quite a few competitive matches. I would love to hear your opinion of what you saw during this match day. Did your team perform well or were you bitterly disappointed? In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!